Some of the information you are about to hear, some may find disturbing. What police found in the soil was this. Seven bodies wrapped up in sheets and duct tape. They had to drink each other's blood. You're not making this shit up, right? Welcome to Two Guys, One Crime. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the podcast. This is Two Guys, One Crime, a true crime podcast hosted by a son, me, and my daddy. That's Big Jim. Well, uh, the guy who his mama says is his daddy, at least. He was the mailman. <laughs> <laughs> or the gardener. <laughs> hey, they were both Asian. <laughs> were they really? <laughs> Actually, yeah, the gardener was and the landlord on oh, his name was on on cho <laughs> that was his name on cho on cho on cho on cho that's on cho um yes welcome back hello everybody hello uh new listeners Hola. hello ogs as we like to call them as of recently no longer boners i i even that when when we changed all this i'm so glad that we're that i'm changing things because Calling people boners was a little excessive. Is it any more excessive than, uh, uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to name names, but a lot of people like the name. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't they know. They prefer to be called boners. I don't know why. That's the crazy part. They like to be called boners. I was very uncomfortable calling people boners, especially women. It was weird. Well, there were a, a couple of women that were like, yeah, boners. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a boner. I'm like, okay. I thought it was going to be derogatory, offensive, and we were going to get some sort of a fucking notification. But That's exactly they were all what for I it. thought. That's exactly what I, I thought. I love you, women. <laughs> uh, welcome back, like I had said, to the podcast. And if you are new, hello. Uh, we are a father son duo. We primarily talk about true crime and other crimes associated with crime or things associated with crime like ghosts and crime or aliens and crime you know conspiracy theories at, at times could be labeled as crimes and this is just the stupid things that we like to talk about let's um, talk about stupid shit son just say it yeah we do talk about a lot of stupid <laughs> shit but this episode for new people uh if you guys can head over to flow.page slash two I was going to say two bears, one cave. That's not, that's, that's the wrong show. If you get over to two guys, no flow dot page slash two guys, one crime. That's our website. You can go over there and find us on all of our links, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. We do have a YouTube, which we're going to be getting back into. Actually, this video might even be on YouTube. So how do, how do you do? Yeah. Good luck. Don't mind the messy background. I'm in the Bra middle of changing my room around. What's a background? Background, back, background. <laughs> so it's a plain white wall with some little decoration and the Febreze that's right there for the stank ass that's in my room. That is you. <laughs> you are the stank ass. <laughs> uh, uh, no, the dog. I tell you what, heads, heads up. Anybody who has a dog, do not feed dogs peanut butter. Worst Ew. gas in the world. What's what's new uh, in the life of Big Jim? Absolutely nothing, other than the fact that I'm <laughs> car hunting. I'm looking for a vehicle. Are you? Uh, I yeah, I want to get. Yeah, dude, I want. I need a vehicle. I need to get the hell out of this house. Um, <laughs> I just need my own free. I mean, I have your brother's car sitting right outside. I could take it wherever and whenever I want. But do you realize how much of a contact high I get or how many looks I get whenever I go into the stores? I know I smell like marijuana. <laughs> if I can smell it on my clothes, I know I smell. I People can probably, and it's, I mean, I'm already a big dude. And when I'm at the grocery store and I have all these fucking snacks, they probably think I have the munchies. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> so other than that, just photo, uh, been 
Well, I watched both the games. Awesome games. Uh, um, games for those who don't know is the the playoff games AFC, for football. NFC. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've been watching. Oh, I did subscribe to a subscription channel. Uh, really? Can we say? That? Yeah. Which one? Hulu. Oh wait, you just got Hulu? Yeah, I've never had Hulu. <clears throat> really? So is it the? <clears throat> Did you get the basic plan or did you get Hulu TV? Uh, I don't know. I just <laughs> go to Hulu on my phone and press Hulu. And I and there's a lot of shows in there that I'm re-watching. Like the one show that I'm watching now, it's called The Bridge. And it's... Uh, oh, I think I remember yeah. that show. Before we get started, let's do one weird fact or crazy law about the story that we're going to talk about today uh one of which which is going to be in the good old count uh, not county the good old country of canada hello hey eh? what canada C- C- canada you mean can canada canada <laughs> jesus christ did you know sir that in the wonderful wonderful I think they are called maple uh, leaves. No, 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 no. The not pastures. What are they called? Pr- prestiges? No, they're not states. Providence. Providence. In the Providence of York, which is, I believe, in Toronto. Yeah, Toronto. Uh, it is. Uh, it is. What is the word I'm looking for? I'm blanking on words. It is illegal. There we go. Uh, to drag a dead horse along the street. Specifically, it is illegal to drag a dead horse along Yong Street in Toronto. Now, what makes this law even crazier? And this is a real law. They do they do have it uh, in in their in their le- legislation. Uh, but what makes it even stranger is that you cannot do this on that street on a Sunday. That means if you want to drag a dead horse on a Monday, you're free to do so. <laughs> that can't be still an active law. Steven, what are you doing? Um, you know, I just found this dead horse. <laughs> uh, you know, today's Sunday, right? Shit. Well, what should I do? Should I just leave it? Yeah, probably. Unless you want to go to jail, guy. All right. We just wait till tomorrow. <laughs> Come watch some hockey, eh? <laughs> Jesus, you got a bear living with you? What was that? Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, today, sir, uh, this is the story that I'm going to be telling you. Again, for those who don't know, uh, we tell stories back and forth. We don't know what the what the story is going to be until we start saying it. Now, some of the times these are well known cases, like we just covered uh, Dorothea Puente. A lot of people know that case. Before that, we were doing ones like Marcus Wesson. We did the Bullseye Killer. We did uh, even the Sausage King of San Leandro. Yeah, his wieners were the doodler. The doodler. Yeah, definitely the doodler if no one knows that one. And there's an update. They believe that they're very, 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 very close to solving or finding who he was. I think they even uh, confirmed a, a possible another... Uh, victim uh, possible another victim. victim another victim yeah not like recently killed but like a, J- a john doe who yeah. who they speculate was probably with tied to the same crimes um yeah so if you haven't seen heard or seen anything about the doodler go check go check out that google the doodler and you'll find you'll travel down to alice in wonderland rabbit hole of serial killer nonsense and that's what we do here at Two Guys, One Mike. Two Guys, One Crime. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so with that being said, like I said, we are going to Canada. Um, for instance, <clears throat> this is a specific part of Canada. Now, this specific part is about 450 miles long. It is located from Prince George, British Columbia to Prince Rupert, British Columbia, Canada. There are anywhere between 18 and 84 victims. 
the span of these victims range from the 1970s to present day. This is called the Highway of Tears. Ooh. Now, the reason why this is called the Highway of Tears is because there are so many victims with unsolved murders. It's more specifically, it's the murdered and disappearances of Native American women and indigenous women. So this is a yeah, very terrible. this is a very rough one. There'll probably be minimal joking in this one, but we can we can maybe shed some light in, into something. Who knows? But get ready for the highway of tears and welcome everybody to Two Guys, One Crime. Now, over four decades in Canada, uh, through all these tall and thick trees, there has a, been a popular lodging route for truckers. That route specifically is Highway 16. As I mentioned, Highway 16 runs about 450 miles. So that's if you're in San Francisco, that's just you're probably reaching towards where? Bakersfield? It's outside of LA. Yeah, no, like ba- no, no. Towards San Diego. You're you're really close to San Diego County, from, maybe. So okay. Yeah. San so yeah. distant distance wise, you're you're looking <clears throat> from San Francisco to about San Diego, give or take. Through all these little cuts and little areas of, of Highway 16, there's a bunch of little towns. Uh, there's impoverished Indian reservations that have now became very infamous uh, for all the wrong reasons, obviously. Multiple women over four decades have disappeared and have also been murdered. Now, most of the women that have disappeared have never been found. And the number that I gave you earlier, 18 to 48 people, women, uh, that's just speculation. They don't know specifically how many women or girls, for that matter, have gone missing or ha- or who have been murdered. Uh, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the Mounties, good old A, A boys, uh, have officially connected 18 cases to what is called the Highway of Tears. However, in the indigenous community claim that they're true number is anywhere over a hundred hundreds hundreds yeah especially now yeah it's definitely and it's not just indigenous and no it's just, not but, just, the, but the but the majority of them are and here's here's the one thing a lot of people you know what they what they show on tv and i don't want to get too off topic but you know reservations are not very pretty not all of them not all of them, I won't say that, but the where we live and where I ventured onto, yeah. <clears throat> so my my point is, you know, these women unfortunately, um, you know, they for whatever reasons they were hitchhiking or walking or broke down, you know, they're they yeah. were already uh in a bad situation if they got picked up. Yeah, there. And that and that's 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 one thing too. Really, specifically in the 70s and 80s, there's a, another show that I'm watching right now, which is probably going to be another story that I'm going to talk about later. Um, but specifically in those times, prostitution was way bigger than what it is now because it was so open-ish at the time. And then they, and then they started really cracking down on it. But a lot of the women were victims because a lot of these people, guys specifically... <sighs> all these women as just objects not even people you know what i mean no no and that's the big let's not get into the political or the discrimination discrimination part of this but that's why a lot of people were raising so much hell about the gabby patino case yeah yeah you know but it, it, no it's so. very true though it, it's something that, <clears throat> that we've talked about before um you know with uh something something that, that they call you know missing white woman syndrome because this this little white girl, and again, no offense to anybody who either knows her personally or whatever, but and not to speak ill of of the dead, but when a white girl goes goes missing, it's national news. When a Hispanic girl yeah. goes missing, and we were very fortunate to have Vanessa Guillen. Anyway, it's not necessarily just indigenous women, women of color, Asian descent, AAPI. It's a big issue going on here in California anybody you know even the white women the white men don't necessarily need to be 
white from this country. Living in Arizona, there was a lot of women that I work with that came that were illegals. Illegals is a bad way to putting them, but that were not this country. And they had no documents to be here. Canadian, Norwegian, South African. I knew a few of them. Yes. All right. So most of the, most, the majority of this information that I'm going to be reading is for, uh, is from uh, justiceforNativeWomen.com. That's where I found the majority of this. Also Wikipedia and a, and a couple of YouTube videos, but majority of it was from JusticeForNativeWomen.com. The first victim that they know of that they found uh, is Gloria Moody. She was 26 years old on October 25th, 1969. This was the first person that they found uh, on the Highway of Tears. She was a mother of two. She was last seen at the Ranch Hotel and Bar in Williams Lake, British Columbia. Where his body was found uh, the, the next day, six miles away from Williams Lake. She had been stripped of her clothing, and upon investigation, it was also discovered that she was sexually assaulted and battered. Nobody was caught for this crime. Gloria is also from the Bella Coola Indian Reservation of the, and I don't want to butcher the name, but the Nulux Nation. Again, this is just the first person. And for those who are who are probably going to wonder, like, well, has anything came of that? No. What I'm giving you is what I've read. What I'm giving you is what I've seen and heard. There's no, all of these, because they've, they have not been found or, you know, same thing with the uh, doodler. These are open investigations. If there's no information coming in, these are just open. Yeah. There's no conclusions. I mean, they really haven't identified. Uh, they have speculated plenty, plenty of times that it could not just be, it's not just one person. Yeah. They yeah, think yeah. It's, it's it, it could be multiple. Yeah. Right. Serial killer, multiple serial killers. One, you know, right. Dem- could have been a domestic violence. It could have been a crime of passion. It could have been an accident. Anything. I mean, there's yeah. so many variables of this, but a lot of the times, obviously with this, you know, it's not an accident that she was found stripped naked and sexually assaulted. Um, but this, like I said, is just one of the many. Uh, the next that they talk about is Micheline, Micheline Parr, 18 years old, in July in the 1970s, on, in 1970. She was hitchhiking. She was a hitchhiker uh, coming from Quebec, Canada. Uh, she was picked up by two women who dropped Micheline off uh, near the Thompson, Tompkins Ranch to another bar location. Uh, Her body wasn't actually discovered until a month later in August. She was also found sexually assaulted and beaten with a blunt object. Again, I wish I could provide you more information other than these really sad, straight to the point facts. It's what the people want, Jim. Give it to them. I'm yeah. Okay. I'll yeah. I'll keep going. (laughs) Uh, Victim number three that I have on my list. This is Gail Ways. She was found 19 years old. She was found in October of 1973. She too was hitchhiking from Clearwater to Campaloos. That's a 67 mile trip. Uh, I'm sorry, a 76 mile trip. Unfortunately, she never made it to her location and she was found dead in a ditch on Highway 16. Uh, there was no uh, blunt force trauma, although there was sexual assault. And some defensive wounds, so she would probably fought her attacker or tried to fight her uh, attacker off. Uh, the next victim is Pamela Darlington. That's actually a really cool last name. Uh, 19 years old, November 1973. She vanished while trying to hitchhike uh, from a local bar in Camp Cam 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 Loops. Sorry, that was like the last one, Clearwater to Kamloops. She was trying to hitchhike from Kamloops out towards another city. Uh, She was found 27 hours later after she was reported missing 
again in a ditch, beaten and sexually assaulted. I'm telling everybody right now, there are there's there, this is this is gonna be, this is a messed up truth of of this story is that a lot of this happens and is still happening to this day. Another good case, uh, which I recommend people listening to uh, on Spotify, is called uh, "Stolen." Uh, a, a young girl. What was that? Uh, whatever the hell is making noise. You heard it? I heard that. Yeah. That was a loud knock. Pause real quick. I want to make sure your grandpa didn't fall. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like I said, she was found uh, 27 hours after she had disappeared from the local bar. Uh, she was also found uh, beaten and sexually assaulted. Our next victim, Colleen McMillan, 16 years old, was found a year later in August 1974. Uh, she, too, was hitchhiking from her house to a friend's house. Now, it did not specifically say where her house was located or where the friend's house was located. However, she was found 28 miles from her house, beaten, strangled, sexually assaulted, and dead. Uh, her body was located on the side of the highway. It wasn't even like in a ditch, like to be concealed. It was as if someone just kind of like opened the door and she fell out the car. She probably got kicked out. Probably. He, that's yeah. fuck. That's insane. It's a highway. You know they're traveling. Well, I don't know what kilometers is, but they're probably traveling, I don't know, 60, 70 miles an hour. Next victim that we have on, on this list is uh, Monica Ig- Ignis. Monica Ignis, 15 years old, was found December 13th on 1974. Uh, she was on her way home from school when she disappeared. Again, uh, this website that I use, it did not say specifically what school or her house was. She was on her way home. Again, no one specifically said where she was from or where her school was at however uh she was found four months lang- later strangled to death now again she's a 15 year old girl four months later four months later four they months found, later yeah they found remains on highway 16 which led to be her mind you this is a killing or a body found just about every year there was a gap from 1970 1969, 1970, 73, 73, 74, 74. And now another gap with Monica Jack. This is the youngest victim that they found based off of that website on in May of 1978. Uh, she was 12 years old. Jesus. 12 years old. What is she doing out there in the middle of nowhere? That's the thing is she was actually last seen riding her bike from a local shopping market by her own mother. Her mother saw her riding her bicycle from the local shopping market. I'm assuming back home. Uh, The mom asked if Monica wanted a ride home because they were at the store and she said, no, she wanted to ride her bike. Well, so the mom let her ride her bike. I don't believe they lived far uh, for her to be okay with that. So she was, she said, yeah, right, right home. But Monica said she wanted to ride her bike home. After some time had passed, Monica's mother drove back towards the shopping center to find Monica's bike and no Monica. Can you imagine if me or my uh, uh, other brothers or whoever, for that matter, you're like, all right, I'll, I'll see you back at the house. And you literally, I'm sorry. I'm surprised I didn't get kidnapped. Remember the time that I walked around from Nani's house, my, my grandmother? At three years old? At three years old, four, three, four years old to the to the store around, way around the corner. That was yeah, a just few to clarify, blocks. No, no, that's a mile. Is you walked a mile? a mile. Yeah, you walked a mile. I was just telling somebody this story. You walked a mile from here where I'm sitting, the house at south west of us <clears throat> to find your grandmother in a, in a grocery store that's no longer there. Yeah. You, yeah. You walk 
or three years old, dude. Yeah, I, I, that is unfucking real. This is the strange. Whoa, this is crazy. So this happened in Canada, but her body wasn't discovered, and I forgot that I even wrote this because I, I wrote it so long ago. Her body wasn't discovered until 17 years later in 1995 when I was three years, four years old. Okay, how did they find where? When loggers stumbled upon human remains, she was about 20 mile, 20 miles from the shopping center where Monica's mother last saw her. The forensic reports uh, discovered that she was strangled to death. Our next victim is uh, Marine Mosi, 33 years old. She was found on May 8th, 1981, and was last seen hitchhiking from Salomon Arms to Kamloops. Seems like Kamloops is a very popular area. Mm-hmm. People are being drawn to Kamloops because most of these pe- most of these women were going there. There, there has to be something about Kamloops. Because the next the next place, or the same place, from Salmon Arms to Kamloops, that's a 68-mile trip. She wanted to hitchhike 68 miles. That's far. That's still far. To do what? To do what? That's my point. I don't know. But her body was discovered the next day about 10 miles away from Kamloops. Uh, witnesses say that she was last seen getting into a man's car. He had long, dark hair and a thick, dark beard. Next victim, this is going to be Shelly Ann Bascu, 16 years old, found May 3rd, 1983. She was last seen at the Hilton, Alberta. A few days later, parts of Shelly's clothes and blood were found near the Athabasca River. Her body was found, was also found near the uh, same area. But it could not be calculated via Google Maps, which is where I was able to locate or find the distances from certain places to certain places. Um, But yeah, her body was also found near that river as well. Uh, Mind you, the Highway 16 is just off of of the uh, embankment there, so it's not too far. Our next victim is Alberta Williams, 24 years old, September 25th, 1989. Her body was found about 23 miles from Prince Rupert, British Columbia on Highway 16. She was also strangulated and sexually assaulted. Um, now, it was actually listed that she was a part of the First Nations uh, tribe. <clears throat> but when I did a little further digging, I guess that's kind of like a umbrella. There's like First yeah. Nations, and then they have yeah. other tribes that are associated with them. So that's about the most information that I got from her, um, as well as the rest of the, the women. Most of these women were either First Nation or uh, the first one that I said, uh, which was the New Walks Nation. Um, but yes, majority of them are coming from the First Nations tribe. Um, our next victim on this list, uh, with a little more detail is Cecilia and kick, kick, Kittle, Kickle, uh, October 1st, 1989, according to justice for native uh, no one knows what her date of birth was. She was living in Vancouver and living with her mother before disappearing. Cecilia was not the only woman missing in her family. Cecilia is listed as being a part of the First Nations, but not specific tribal information. Again, if you go to First Nations, uh, I'm sorry, if you go to justiceforNativeWomen.com, you'll see the names, the how they found them, and then the tribes that they are associated with. So those are the ones that I was able to find. Uh, next is another teenager, uh, Daphne Nicole. 15 years old, found June 13th, 1990. Delphine was last seen hitchhiking. 15 years old, man. Still hitchhiking. Uh, She was found hitchhiking home towards Telqua, British Columbia. She has never been found. She's just never been found. She was also labeled as, or listed, excuse me, as native 
uh, but with no specific tribe. Other women in uh, on this list was 16-year-old Roma Wilson, found 1994. Roxanne Thuria, 15 years old, found 1994. Lana Derricks, Nicole Hoare, Tamara Chipman, Aaliyah Auger, and Madison Scott. Madison Scott was 20 years old and was found in 2011. Are there any cases that are still being continued as new or recent? I know it sounds terrible to say, but is there still activity going on with this shit this, um, in this location? I mean, I know they, they categorize it as highway of tears, but I mean, that's just a broad description of this strip of highway. But yeah. in that vicinity, there's still... Uh unfortunate incidents like this happening besides domestic or so right now what i'm rage or right now what i'm looking at on uh, highwayoftears.org it's uh resources with the documents and reports as far as i know right now based off of the the website may in late 2013 late late 2013 Early 2014 is one of the last reported crimes or last re- reported people found. They definitely took advantage of not having the uh, people not having technology, cell phones, cameras, you know. Yeah. They were s- serious predators. Uh, yeah. 2014 was one of the last known victims found. So I cannot definitively say, yes. There's no more people on the highway of tears, no more women or girls on the highway of tears. But for all we know, there could be hundreds, if not thousands more. That are they, still out they, there. They just haven't have found them. Right. So there's no new development. There's nothing going up. There's no, no gas the, station. There's the no only, the only, no, the only thing that's different um, is that there is more of a watchful eye. Obviously, with uh, 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 what's it called? The MMWI or the MMIW, the Missing Murdered Indig- Indig- Indigenous Women uh, program. So, but as far as I know, the highway hasn't really changed. Still 400. So, is it, is it patrolled or do they have cameras? They have what satellite? 2005, the uh, the the Mountie Police, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, uh, formed something called the EPANA, a law enforcement group that focuses primarily on the Highway of Tears. So yes, there is a patrol. There is a what... there is a patrol. Does it deter a, a lot of people? Possibly. Do do they have cameras and drones and so on and so forth? I I can't answer that because I'm not too sure. But I can I can tell you that they have something called the EPANA, and they basically just monitor the entire highway of tears. Most of the people who live uh, in the names of these areas are living in poverty. So if for, like you were kind of mentioning earlier, if if you know what a reservation is, it's not uh, glorified. Pretty. It's not glorified. Not it's not. All. It's very messed up what has happened with native americans and getting their land back most people don't have cars hence the vast amount of hitchhiking so that's actually makes sense you don't have a car how are you supposed to get to school to home your grocery store hitchhike which obviously makes it dangerous some of the people who are also living here were also homeless some were prostitutes some were drug users drug users or both or all three yeah you know it happens, and it happens there. Um, there are signs posted all along now. Uh, that's actually one thing that I can tell you. There are signs posted all along Highway 16 that says, do not pick up any hitchhikers, uh, especially after these incidences, um, which makes sense. Also kind of doesn't make sense, because if you're walking a 450-mile-long highway, your feet are, you know, if you're diabetic or whatever, you're going to pass out if you don't have the food. You know? Yeah, but nowadays in 2022, people prepare 
to walk marathons like that now. So very true. Very true. <laughs> you know, there's equipment, footwear, hats, type of jacket, type of hell, cell phone technology. We have satellite phones. People prepare themselves to walk that far. Yeah. Um, and then in 2015. Uh, it was reported that Canada has the highest number of missing or murdered and or murdered indigenous women um, with the official number of missing women over 1,200. And that just makes up 4% of the entire population of British Columbia. 4%. No, I know, dude. I know. And now probably out of that four percent let's just be on the high side of that four percent is four thousand so half of that is two thousand two thousand people or male or female are not even uh brought to brought to any form of light they're not even spoke of they're not reported no one's reported anybody missing nobody's reported anybody none of that but now this goes back to what we were, this next little part goes back to what we were saying earlier about not re- reporting and stuff too. Like I said, at the beginning of this, what draws more attention? What do you mean? As far as activity, what draws more, more attention in, in the news when it comes to people missing? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The, 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 where's all the white women at syndrome? Exactly. <laughs> And it's true. As as funny Sorry, as it's, no, what was that? Blazing saddles, right? Blazing saddles. Cle- yeah, cleave on little. Where's all the white women? Where are the white women at? But it's true. It's very yeah. true. Things don't happen until a white woman goes missing. Hence, to, in two thousand and two. Okay, let's not discriminate so much here. Now this no, no, no. is for all not, you animal lovers. Give it domesticated dog or a cat go missing and people lose their fucking shit <laughs> it's true that's very true okay but in 2002 nicole this is gonna sound bad whore not whore but it's h-o-r-a like a boar but it, it's whore sorry <laughs> <laughs> bet there was a lot of fights over that last name <laughs> <laughs> Nicole Hoare went missing on the Highway of Tears, and she made a big blip on the media radar. Now, why would this make a big blip on the media radar? Well, Nicole was a white woman with no indigenous background. She wasn't married into uh, a Native American tribe or anything like that. She was just a white woman who went missing. In As I say... They only care because of their skin, yes. their background, their ethnicity, their look. Was she blonde? Was she brunette? Was she tall? Was she skinny? Was she, bit, you know, it's all discriminative. It's all profiling. It's yeah. all definitely profiling. That's, that's what, I, that, that's a big thing that, that people use and say. And we will end on this note, on this unfortunate, sad note. Sorry for ruining anybody's morning. Well, I could definitely say that if it was not, it doesn't even have to be white women's syndrome. Now it could be drug related. It could be firearm related. It could be trafficking of any type. Somebody is watching. But yeah, this is, uh, this is the highway of tears. And like I said, it's a very unfortunate case. It's a very unfortunate long ongoing case because no one has been caught or found. No, and it's continuous. And because of the Petito case, all this has reignited a bunch of people to start talking about. It. There is a big movement on trying to help non-Caucasian or however they word it now to be politically. If you're not a white woman, there's no emergency. Yeah. Pl- to put it plain and simple, because like we said earlier with the whole thing with uh, Gab- Gabby Petito, because of her case another case in the same uh state as hers started to catch more light and that was a a black woman and then you had six other cases that were kind of just left untouched of black women asian women uh 
uh, you know, Southeast Asian women, like so many other women that were just kind of like, I don't know. We'll see what happens. They weren't important enough. Which is the real shitty part. Yeah. So, yes, that was the Highway of Tears. Uh, again, sorry for ruining anybody's morning. Sorry for ruining your your morning, sir. Uh, but I promise. No, I just, <laughs> it's all right. You know, growing up, I knew a couple. I knew a specific girl who was of of uh, Native American, and and it was grandma's friend, my mom's friend, and she ended up being kidnapped, and they left her for dead in the Oakland Hills, and she ended up surviving. No way. Yeah, she did. It didn't. She didn't have a very positive upbringing. You know, story upbringing too, but story. After it just want you know how do you how does something like that how do you get over that even as yeah. a male if I were somebody were to burn me beat the shit out of me I'd be traumatized PTSD this is a small petite female and these fuckers put a nine and she survived I don't I I haven't heard or seen for her since hell you've been bored but the last time I you know, we were she was spoke of between me and family members. It was a while, probably before you were born, say like thirty years. But this Jeez. is something that happened to her. That's fucked up. Yep, yep. Well, thank you everybody for listening. If you're if you're still here, again, hopefully we didn't put a damper on anyone's mood today. Thank you everybody for watching. Um, we are two guys, one crime. We don't really know how to end it, you know, like with like, you know, Molly and Cody, they're like, oh, yeah, see you next time over the fence or like <laughs> drinking the Kool-Aid. Keep your doors locked. Mine's open. Keep drinking the Kool-Aid. We don't have that. Or We're keep just it twisted or keep it twisted. Or, yeah. yeah. Or see ya or. Yeah, we don't have a, a we don't, an exit for we don't have a yet. closer. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, we could try and work one out. Let's see. Adios. <laughs> <laughs> now that's profiling pal hey it's not profiling <laughs> if i am mexican <laughs> so uh yes please be sure to go check us out everybody flow dot page slash two guys one crime tiktok instagram facebook page the whole nine we got it uh things slowly coming into better pr- progression with this new name change and uh I like it. I enjoy it. Me too. Me I hope too. Everybody Me else too. enjoys our platform and enjoys our content. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Adios. <laughs> See ya. Don't hitchhike. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. True. Until the next crime, we'll talk to you later. Now whatever but and not to speak ill of of the dead but when a white girl goes goes missing it's national news when a hispanic yeah. girl goes missing and we were very fortunate to have Vanessa Guillen yeah i'm hearing something too do you hear something yeah that was weird somebody trying to get in your door i fuck no my Hold on. <clears throat> I Hold heard on. something behind yeah. me. Yeah. Hold on. No, there's, there's nobody out there. There's nothing out there. Should we continue the story? Because if we keep here knocking this, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> well, let's, let's see what happens. There was another bump. I hear something. That's your stomach, or is that or is that the dog? The dog's asleep in the front room, and my door is closed. <laughs> you better sage that house, dude. <laughs> I am. Uh, did not say specifically what school where her house was. What is that? Are you hungry? No, I'm not. What am I doing? What's that noise? Are you burping? No. What is what that noise? noise? That noise. You don't hear that?
me moving on my bed i'm not i'm not cutting any of this out so you can hear this no it literally sounds like like uh you've seen signs hear my bed you hear my bed yeah i hear your bed it's not your bed have you seen seen the movie signs with Mel, mel gibson yeah with the aliens and they talk on the on the on the baby monitor oh yeah 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 that's what it's i'm hearing that through your microphone maybe some feedback so the tv's off i don't have anything bluetooth on i have i mean like i said i'm in the middle of cleaning up my room and rearranging stuff so ladies and gentlemen if if, if you're still here listening and or watching (laughs) we may be in the presence of uh extraterrestrials i don't know something your stomach isn't growling no i'm not hungry at all you want me to keep the mic off no, you know, keep it on because it's more well, shit. Now happens. you're freaking me the fuck out because I don't <laughs> hear the shit you do. What the hell do I want to hear that for? It's it's you know it's uh it's uh what's it called? It's content. This ain't no ambiance shit. Whatever. <laughs> I don't want. To, if you see something behind me, dude, I'm shutting this shit down. I'm I will let you out. know. I'm probably, I will I'm let you know. Run outside. I will let you know. Uh, Monica <laughs> Ignis, <laughs> 15 years old. Fuck disappeared Asshole. from her school 